All right. Uh, I think housekeeping is done. Let's get into some announcements, Joel. Okay, let's do it. First up, uh, I'm not sure if you've got anything. Uh, Treasured Films, they have announced that they are doing subscriptions for 2024. And this is maybe the easiest subscription package I've seen yet. Uh, they have guaranteed six releases coming out in 2024. And if you want to sign up for theirs, it is 106 British pounds. And if you want, you can sign up for the works, which also will include those six Blu-ray releases. But on top of that, they're going to be putting out at least two vinyl soundtracks and you will get everything if you sign up for that. And it is not that pricey. It's 146 pounds. Uh, Obviously, I believe there's shipping costs involved, but these are pretty limited and it's pretty inexpensive to sign up for a whole year to support a new label. I mean, they've only put out two or three releases so far, and this is a great time to give some money to them. Yeah, I don't, I haven't seen anything uh, uh, with these guys. I don't know that much about them, but it's definitely amazingly helpful, you know, if you want to take the plunge and, you know, put your faith behind a label like this and, you know, give them a little bit of money up front to, to get that going. That definitely goes a long way. Uh, so far, they've released... Uh, the newest one is Mausoleum. I don't remember the title of the, fr oh, okay. the, the first release that they did, but Mausoleum looks incredible from them. So if you are uh, interested in films like Mausoleum or... Uh, let me look up the name of the first title. The Last Hunter. That was... That was their first title. And oh. I think, oh, they also did Satan's Little Helper. That's right. So they've done three so far. Uh, kind of cult, not, not super obscure yet. The Last Hunter's fairly obscure, but uh, they're putting everything they can into these. We're talking booklet, hard box, uh, the, the mausoleum release. If you buy it directly from their website, they give you a, uh, they call it the Bitey Boobs Magnet. It's a, <laughs> it's a, a zombie with mouths on the nipples. And uh, it's it's a pretty nice uh, incentive to get it. Um, so far, I believe their releases are all region B, Kevin. Uh, Last Hunter may have been region free, but I believe the other two are region B since they're also for sale in the U.S. But decent company. Uh, Graham, the owner over there, is a wonderful person to support. Highly recommend looking into Treasured Films. Uh, check it out. Next up, Kino announced that coming soon, they will put out Mr. Bug Goes to Town, the animated film from 1941. This has a 4K scan of the 35 millimeter Technicolor successive exposure negative that was done in 2019 by Paramount. And uh, this is also known as Happy Goes to Town. And uh, it was produced by Max Fleischer and directed by Dave Fleischer. I am always stoked to see some of these old non-Disney animated films coming to Blu-ray. This was a big surprise for me. This was a nice way to start the week off because, you know, Kino in the past, after they did uh, the, the Pappy Freeling animated stuff, they said, no, no more animation. It's just not really doing good. And so this is this is a big one. This is a, this is a great film. Yeah. And it hasn't really been released in any decent version i know thunderbean was going to release it on blu-ray but that ended up not happening so i'm really excited to see this uh especially you know if they you know uh, the colors are just so vibrant and, and everything yeah. as they should be this is yeah if you like uh you know like vintage animation classic animation you can't go wrong with fleischer this is a really really fun movie you can't go wrong with Fleischer unless Warner screws up the transfers like they did with the other Fleischer's head. <laughs> yeah, that's not their fault. Their their animation is <laughs> is great though, um, and and if you are a fan of you know classic animation, you know buy this at, like day one because you want to send a message to Kino to keep bringing that stuff out. There's a lot of famous uh, famous studio and and Fleischer stuff that Paramount has that has never been out there. So. We want to, you know, let them know that there is a, there is an audience out there for them, and and to keep it coming, because obviously they're they're taking another chance on this since they've been so gun shy about doing animation. We want them to keep it coming because there's not a lot of people that would kind of put something like this out. 
and we we've proven that that works i mean warner archive putting out that looney tunes collector's edition volume one it sold yeah. very well and now volume two is out and volume three is coming out in just a few months um hopefully they keep those coming until they've exhausted the entire library yeah exactly i i mean there's just there is so much great classic animation especially there's a lot of stuff that has just never been released on anything or you know they have public domain kind of really bad releases so there is a wealth of stuff out there that they can draw from if they're if they see a market that's the thing i am a huge fan of classic animation and a reminder to everybody Def Crocodile has been the best in the game in animation this year. So when you're voting for the Shelf Shock Rewind Awards for the animation category, make sure you look at your Def Crocodile releases. Absolutely. 100%. Next up is First Love from 1977 is coming on Blue from Kino. This is a 2021 master from a 4K scan. Uh, I've never seen this one, and uh, I know very little about it, but... Uh, I, I'm sure you've seen this one because you've seen. I have. I've never seen this. It's it. I mean, we have it. It's on one. tape. It's never. It's never been on disc. So that's really great that it's coming out. That's what I love about Kino. They they find little things like this, you know, that haven't been available. I don't know if it's good or not, but someone right. will probably appreciate it, and so they're kind of resurrecting it and going to allow it to have a new audience. And that's what. That's really what it's all about. That uh, Kino continues to do that. Imprint continues to do that. Umbrella has done that quite a few times this year. The amount of labels that are seemingly finding stuff that's never been on disc anywhere in the world. It's, God, it's been a great year for stuff like that. Yeah, and it is it is nice. It seems like even though a lot of the studios aren't that interested in physical media releases, they are interested in preservation and are doing work behind the scenes to you know, make new scans and all this stuff. We just need to send the message to them that, that we want those scans on discs, on nice editions. And, you know, somebody like Paramount is great because they used to not really want to license and then yeah. they decided they're going to license and then they decided they're not going to license. And now they're back to licensing to everybody that will, you know, take it. So I, I that's a good development. I hopefully that will continue that. And not only are they licensing, they're also releasing a bunch of their stuff, which wasn't happening either. Exactly. So it's a great time for that. Uh, let's see. Michael Smith says, I'm old enough to remember when this hit cable. As a teen, I was only interested because there's a little bit of nudity from <laughs> the standard romantic <laughs> soft focus film. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Uh, next up, uh, February 13th, in a Blu-ray steelbook, The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, season one is coming from amc uh i have not seen any of the walking dead since season two uh, are you a big walking dead person joel uh no i am not into <laughs> walking dead i i saw one episode and i was like that's fine i wasn't against it but then everybody kept telling me that it was just bad getting bad yeah. after a couple seasons so i was like well i'm not gonna start now and then it continued for so long. It just it surprised me, but you know there is. A, I guess there's an audience for it. It's, the comics are I mean, great. They, yeah, that's what I hear. Um, how many spinoffs is there now? Like five. I, I, be, I believe there's been at least two, and I think they have one or two more announced. That's crazy. Um, I, I don't know about the art on this. Uh, my mom is freaking out because she loves Daryl Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, the, the art on this reminds me of like, uh, I, I can't think of anything, but like a meth trailer park while looking at this art. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. Oh, geez. This is the third spinoff of walking dead. And I, I also think they have one or two more coming too. Well, you know, if they keep, if people keep, uh, watching it, then they'll keep making them, I guess. Yeah, and I, I liked Walking Dead until Frank Darabont was gone. I think he was holding a lot of the, the good stuff together. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, Paprika, the anime film from 2006, is coming out on 4K from Sony in this beautiful-looking steelbook on February 20th. And uh, so far, I think this is only listed as in the U.S., but I believe this should be in uh, in, in more territories. So... 
Uh, I've never seen Paprika. Have you seen this one? I haven't seen this, but this movie is crazy popular. It rents all the time. We sell like tons and tons of copies of it. People always want this one. So, uh, up, you know, on 4K, I'm sure it's going to look great. Sony does a yeah. good job. So I'm looking forward to checking it out then. <laughs> Wave says, smoking a bowl and watching this day one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, the one thing I really wanted to highlight, I had some people that were questioning how this was going to look on 4k. I wanted to remind everybody animation in 4k, if when it's done right, has looked nothing but incredible so far, but on top of that, it's Sony and Sony is the one studio that you can trust 9.8 times out of 10, that their 4k releases are incredible. Yeah, definitely. They're a little inconsistent with, uh, you know, with their still books, sometimes they're in print for a while. Sometimes they go out of print pretty quick. Right. Uh, that's really the only thing. So if you're interested in, in Paprika, I would just pick it up sooner rather than later because you never know. They they, they seem to be going on whims. And then well, they'll, and maybe they'll re-release it. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll re-release it in a, you know, like with a, a additional stuff. I, they're, they're confusing. That's what I was going to bring up. It's not only is it going out of print, but they've released things on Steelbook on 4K without HDR. And then two yeah. and a half years later, then released it in another Steelbook with HDR. And it's like, well, that feels kind of shady now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I never know what to expect with them. Although they, the the quality of the transfers is uniformly pretty much excellent. So right. at least you know you're going to get a decent one. That's going to be worth the upgrade. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, new features on this would be nice. I'm not sure if that's been announced yet, Chris. Uh, next up, <laughs> February 13th on Blue from Relativity Media. And uh, I believe the other company is called Ketchup Entertainment, which I've never heard of. Uh, <laughs> they're releasing Robert Rodriguez's 2023 joint Hypnotic with Ben Affleck. And uh, I've had so many people say, why is this just now coming out? I thought this came out a year ago. And everything I've heard is that this is robert rodriguez's worst movie by miles wow okay uh i didn't even hear about this but when i see robert rodriguez i stay away so <laughs> not a fan of any of them no i mean i haven't seen all of his movies just because you you could I say really no, appreciated them that much. i mean you know some of them are okay it's just he's not really my thing he doesn't make movies for me, and that's fine. <laughs> Everybody is saying how bad it is. <laughs> oh, I love this. Uh, okay, go on to the next one before we start the comment section on fire. Uh, Nova Media, who is one of the Asian premium uh, releasers of like steelbooks and full slips and all those craziness. Uh, every year in December, they have their annual winter festival sale, and this is going on until December 31st. Uh, just keep in mind a few things. When you go over there and uh, you check out their website, if you are you see like five titles, you're like, these look great. You put them all in your cart. They will charge you like, I, I think it's like $80 for shipping. Uh, just keep in mind, if you only buy one or two, it drops down to a fairly reasonable rate. There is some like exponential algorithm with the shipping. Don't have a heart attack the moment you first look at it. Play around with it for a minute. I also think there's another option for, I think it's called Easy Pack or something like that. That's a little bit cheaper. Just look around. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the expert on it, but I did want to say watch out because it does feel a little crazy when you first go in there. Uh, next up. Paramount is releasing The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance from 1962 on 4K again. And this is the exact same disc that was in their Paramount Presents line. But what's odd, that Paramount Presents release is not out of print yet. So they're just adding another like variant release of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance on 4K. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a classic, so it definitely deserves to be in circulation. I kind of like the cover art better than the than the Paramount Presents one. It's a little classier. So yeah, that's cool. At least you get a choice on that. Yeah, this will be out on March 5th. And uh, the Paramount Presents lines, if I remember right, I believe I was told they are limited to 6,000 copies. So they may mm. be anticipating that one going out of print, or they could just say, hey, I, I want more opportunities. 
Yeah, the Paramount Presents is another confusing line because I know some of their stuff has gone out of print and gotten re-released, and some of it goes out of print and doesn't get re-released. I don't know how they determine when that's going to happen, but it's nice that they're you know keeping some of these out there. Right, I agree. Uh, Wave, from what I hear, this is supposed to be the exact same disc as what was in the Paramount Presents release, unfortunately. Uh, next up is... Beverly Hills Cop 3. Lots of Paramount love tonight. This is coming on February 20th. And uh, I'll just say now, there is a lot of Eddie Murphy love coming this year, it seems like. Uh, Mm -hmm. Not only are they doing part three by itself, but they are adding that to a collection where you can get all three of the Beverly Hills Cop films on 4K right in time for the fourth one to come out on Netflix. Uh, Trailer for that just dropped, I believe, today or yesterday. And uh, yeah, these are both going to be available February 20th. How do you feel about Mr. Axel Foley, Joel? Uh, well, you know, the first one is a masterpiece, a classic. It's hilarious. You know, I'll never get tired of it. I like this. I, actually, I like all of them. I'm going to say it. I like I like two. Uh, a lot of people don't, but Tony Scott is always fun. And then the third one is a mess. It's not a great film, but I just, I don't know. I enjoy it. I like the theme park aspect of it. It's kind of fun. It's got the normal, like, John Landis, like, funny cameos of directors and other weird stuff going on. So, you know, it's, it's, if you don't think about it compared to the first or even the second film, then, you know, it can be enjoyable on its own. I, uh, I remember going back to Beverly Hills Cop years after it came out and watched it with my wife. And it was the first time she'd ever seen it. And I just remembered it being like every other buddy cop movie that was coming up around that time. And the first 10 minutes of that first movie is way more violent, way more in your face, much more cussing than you, than you get from any of those other movies. I'm like, damn, this is actually really gritty and good from what I remember. (laughs) Yeah. It, I, I watched it. The first one I revisited a, a couple years ago and it's just, when you see Eddie Murphy in his prime, it's just, it's so great. It reminds you just yeah. like how funny he was and, and how just, I don't know, he, he basically could do anything in the film and it was just hilarious and he kind of carried it on his, on his personality and, and it, it just, it just works. I don't know. That was just the time. And, you know, he's, he's gone through a lot. Hopefully they can, you know, re- you know, rekindle some of that in a new one. I haven't seen the trailer or anything yet. I'm not anticipating too much out of it after this long, but you know, maybe they'll surprise us. The The trailer actually brought back some feels and judge Ryan holds in there again. And yeah, it, it looks good. Uh, <laughs> Dustin says, fun fact, the only Beverly Hills cop film I've seen is the third one. Love the amusement park setting. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about Mr. Murphy again in just a minute, but first, Fallen Leaves from this year is coming on Blu-ray from Mubi in the UK on March 11th. And uh, this is probably a decent time to remind everybody to keep an eye on Mubi. Uh, Not only streaming, which a lot of people in the US have paid attention to because they they do their uh, very specifically curated titles that rotate. I think they're only in there for 30 days or whatever. Uh, But their Blu-rays have been pretty decent so far. And uh, the stuff they're putting out exclusively to the UK, they've they've all been pretty damn good. Yeah, I've been watching. Movie, any, though. I haven't watched any of the releases of Mubi, but I, I've noticed that they have been ramping out and been and coming strong in the releases. So that's really cool and picking up some pretty interesting stuff. This one, yeah. I mean, Aki Karismaki is is great. So I'm really interested to see this. I imagine that uh, Lars von Trier Kingdom release is going to do very well for them. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I I love the the you know the first two parts. I haven't seen the the final uh, incarnation or or whatever that. So I'm looking forward to that myself. But yeah, definitely, I think that'll get them on a lot of people's radar. Good. Uh, we got a little side conversation going on in the chat about the K-Pack shipping from uh, what we were just talking about with Nova Media. Silent Mandible, just so you know, if I remember right, the K-Pack sh- tracking only works on their end and you can't track with it. So it's basically, if it doesn't show up to you, they can go in and find out where that last ended up, but it's basically useless for you. So uh, yeah, keep keep that in mind. <laughs> 
Uh, next up, MGM coming in with Poppy from 1969. This is coming on January 2nd, and you can pre-order this now. Uh, this one says, uh, Puerto Rican widower Abraham Rodriguez, known as Poppy to his preteen sons, grapples with poverty and hardship in their Spanish Harlem neighborhood, desperate to provide his sons every opportunity to succeed. And noting the reverence with which Americans treat Cuban immigrants, Poppy lights upon a wild scheme. He sets his boys afloat in a boat off the coast of Florida, confident that they will be rescued as Cuban refugees and adopted by wealthy patrons. I have not seen this one. Have you seen this one? I have never seen this. And it, it sounds interesting. MGM mod releases are, they're all over the place. They're, yep. they're super interesting. And it's kind of a surprise that they just started coming back hard and releasing these because forever they were just licensing and not doing anything. So that that's, that's great. It's just more of their library getting out there. Uh, yeah, Arkin is in this. Uh, it looks very good. Um, yeah, Nikki anything Mides with Arkin is gonna be is gonna be worth a watch. Absolutely. Nikki Media says it's very good. Controversial in its day for getting a G rating. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Uh, Eddie Murphy back again, January 9th. They are releasing Raw on Blu-ray. His stand-up special. Um, this one's interesting. This this came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I think many people would be more excited about Delirious, but if I remember right, that one was shot on tape, I think. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen either of them, but I remember Delirious being the stronger of the two, so it, it is an interesting choice. Hey, but you know, that's I you know that's good. It's getting out there. Yeah, uh, I, I don't love the cover on it. Uh, it, it's also bothersome that uh, at least if they're doing their job right, this uh, does appear to be a BDR coming from Paramount. That's an interesting choice. Yeah, I don't think they've done any BDRs, though. I think they've all been pressed. I imagine the first run will probably be a pressed mod, and then they might go burned after that, depending on how many they're selling. It's a, That's yeah. a tough one. I wish they would actually just let people know about that kind of stuff. I think it would drive the sales, you know, if they're like, hey, the first edition of however many copies is going to be pressed. I think people are going to buy it sooner rather than later. But, you know, it's just, it kind of, to me, it's kind of off-putting, you know, because if I want to buy something, I don't want to take the chance and necessarily right. pay a bunch for a BDR. I mean, I'm a little prejudiced against BDRs. It's kind of... It's unfair, I know, but they cost more for something that's less durable. Yep. So I just it just it just rubs me the wrong way. I wish they would be more transparent. Not necessarily Paramount specifically, just all of these companies that that do these ones. Beyond that, the worst part is if you do like oh gosh, I can't remember the specific release, but I've done this before where they advertise this, but I kind of thought, hey, it might be a press mod, let's wait for reviews. The reviews came out, and it was pressed mod for the very first run, but that first run was literally like 500, and when you go to buy one because the review said that it was pressed, now they're burned already. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a mess. I remember when But I'm a Cheerleader came out, uh, yes. they had mod editions and pressed editions at the same time somehow, and so when we would order them, uh, we never knew what we were going to get. Yep. which is extremely frustrating, but yeah, I, I guess that's how it works. I don't know. I don't know how much control these specific companies have or if Allied Vaughn, who usually takes care of all this stuff, is the one making the call on, on that, but it it's super inconsistent, so it would be nice if they could at least let people know what's happening. Transparency goes a long way. It, it really does. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up, Tormented. Oh, yeah. From 1960 is coming from Film Masters. Uh, this is coming in April. I don't know specifically which date yet. Uh, this one's going to have a new 4K restoration from the archival elements. An audio commentary by Gary Rhodes. Uh, Bert, uh, Bert I. Gordon, the amazing colossal filmmaker. Archival interview with the writer, director, producer. Introduction with the Mystery Science Theater 3000 writer, performer Frank Conniff. Bigger than life. Uh, we got a new Ballyhoo motion picture documentary featuring C. Courtney Joyner. And... You have the MST3K version of Tormented, which there is a lot on this disc. I'm so glad that this is getting this crazy deluxe treatment. This, this is going to be a really fun release. 
this is I think this is actually a really effective, great, creepy movie. And yeah. I'm just I'm a big Bird Eye Gordon fan in general, but this is actually like a really good movie in my opinion. And I'm glad that it's gonna be getting this kind of love. Uh it's nice that they're including the Mystery Science Theater as well, because I probably saw this for the first time originally on Mystery Science Theater. And, you know, like re- regardless of what I think of the legacy of Mystery Science Theater and any yeah. of that, I do credit it with seeing uh, a lot of these kind of, um, you know, classic uh, horror B-movies for the first time and getting them out there, you know, for a lot of people. Uh, so I'm excited for this release. I wasn't sure what was going to be going on with it because Warner did the, you know, the Warner Archive edition. Uh, so hopefully the elements that they had access to, you know, are in good condition and they did a good job. So they usually do a great job. Film Masters has been knocking it out of the park. I agree. Uh, we got a question. Ronnie says, how can I tell if my, but I'm a cheerleader Blu-ray is burned or pressed? The easiest way to do this is to take your disc, flip it over and look at the color of the disc, of the, the data side. If it is silver, it is pressed, and if it is black, it is burned. Uh, anything else in your years of expertise you want to throw out there on that? Unfortunately, with that one, if I remember correctly, the packaging is the exact same regardless. Yeah. So if you look at it, like you don't want to open it because you're not sure which one it is, you're not going to be able to tell until you actually open it and look at it. So it's a little yeah. bit frustrating. Yeah, they, they did nothing different. There was, uh, I don't think there was a slip cover or anything special on that to hide anything. No. You just, there's no way of seeing that unless you open it up, of course. Yeah, that's that was Lionsgate, and they've been really, they're not great with their mod stuff. They're worse than any of the other ones. It's, they don't do a lot of mod ones, it seems like, though. No, not very many, but... Again, to release <laughs> to release pressed and burned at the same time, you gotta yeah. really choose to mess that up. Um, correct, Sibner. I thought if it was burnt, you weren't allowed to use the Blu-ray logo. Lionsgate got around that by doing both at the same time, so uh, they they could just play ignorant. Next up, uh, we had talked about this recently. Celluloid Dreams is a new boutique label, and they are releasing The Case of the Bloody Iris in 4K on April 9th here in the U.S. This is the slipcover arts. Here is the English language art, and then the original Italian language art will be on the reverse of that inner sleeve. This one is going to have HDR10, a brand new 4K transfer and restoration, New commentary track with film critic uh, Guido Henkel. Uh, new featurette with the writer Ernesto Gastaldi and the director Giano Carnim, Carnim, Carnimeo. That's how you say it. I'm definitely not Italian. Uh, featurette with the actor George Hilton. Uh, we got a new outtake reel. Featurette with the actress Paola Quattrini. Uh, new Italian trailer in 4K res- uh, resolution. And uh, the big thing is if you buy this from their site, you get... Uh, these lobby cards that they're they're calling lobby cards, but these are the actual reproductions of the big lobby cards. These are 12 inches by eight and a quarter inches. These are massive and wow. you're getting six of them. And that's why everybody that's gone to their site has seen that it's expensive. It's like $40 to buy from their site plus $10 shipping because you get six foot long pieces of art with this. Plus, the slipcover is exclusive to their site. So if you really, really want that slipcover, you got to go buy it from them. But now the hard part, then on top of that, they're only shipping to the U.S. So if you really want the lobby cards and you live in a different country, there at the moment does not appear, appear to be any other way to get those. That's a little frustrating. I'm assuming they don't want to deal with the hassle of you know overseas shipping. Uh, or maybe they can't directly do it because of licensing. That's possible too. But uh, yeah, this came out of nowhere. It's it's actually I, I was super excited when this one got announced and kind of surprised that you know this label, this new label coming out of nowhere with such a big title like this. I mean, it's not really that big of a title, but you know, for Jolly fans, uh, this is a big title. It's an Edward Finch Jollo. It hasn't been on uh, high def at all, and it's fantastic. So, you know, they they went all out on this, and I'm glad that they're giving it the love that it deserves. 
I'm very interested to see what they do after this. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Following hopefully up something this, like this, this is one, a big deal. yeah, hopefully this one, you know, makes a lot of waves and, and, uh, you know, gets them a nice cash infusion so they can continue on. Cause I don't, have they said anything else that they have planned? Nope. This, this was it. This was it. I was kind of uh, surprised with how with how quickly it materialized after you know hearing about it. You're like, oh, there's this apparently there's this new label, and they're going to do Case the Bloody Iris. Oh, now it's available. That, yeah, because <laughs> a lot of times these new labels, you know, they take a little while, uh, you know, to get going to get their first one up. So who knows? Yeah, sounds like they know what they're doing at least. Uh, yeah. Sibner wanted to point out the good thing is that they don't charge until it's shipped. And uh, I would say the good part of that is relative. I know that there are a lot of people that appreciate I can pay for it now and the money's out of my account so I don't have to worry about it in April when they ship it because I don't know what my April life is going to be like. So <laughs> could could be good, could be bad. <laughs> uh, Sibner also points out that it's on Blu-ray, but it's through Shameless. So it may as yeah, well not that, be on Blu-ray. That doesn't really count. <laughs> I love that we both had that same feeling. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, this looks decent. And if you are in another country, you can buy this from Diabolic already. Uh, they are taking pre-orders. And it's only, I think, $30 on, on uh, 4K through Diabolic. But also, I believe they are working on international shipping. I'm just not sure if they're going to be able to do that anytime soon. So if you really want to yeah. lock this down, you may want to do it through Diabolic. But again, no slipcover if you're super into that. Have you seen this one? Um, I think I saw a really poor like Tubi stream of it. A while ago, so I, I don't really count it. I, I I remember not liking the presentation and just really being turned off by it. Yeah, that makes all the difference sometimes. Uh, if it's if it's a bad uh, presentation of it, it can definitely take away, you know, especially a lot of these kind of ones that are dark and then they're extra dark on the bad presentations. Then you can't really see what's going on. But if you like really stupid, trashy Jallo movies uh then this is just one of the best and i i really have to ask uh if you don't why why are you here <laughs> i'm just <laughs> kidding <laughs> totally kidding trashy giallo is great though so if you're not into it uh take a deeper dive because they're they're really fun uh, yeah and and with you know with edward spanish you can watch you know the the high quality uh giallos from like uh martino or you can watch some of the trashy ones Nice. <laughs> Had to. Uh, okay, going to the next one. The big country. Okay, before we go into this, and it, that was a weird time to cut that off, but it's really <laughs> awkward that uh, Kino is suddenly just re-releasing films exactly the way they already were. And it seems like, I, I don't remember this going out of print from them. I, they may have. Uh, but The Big Country, uh, let, let's talk about this. Coming on Blu-ray February 6th, this is a reissue. Uh, they'd already put this out previously. This is exactly the same transfer, extras and encoding, as their 2018 release. I believe that release also had the slipcover. I don't think there's anything different about this. And it's just five years later, they're just putting it out again. Yeah, it was a little bit odd. I mean, The Big Country is fantastic, so I'm glad that it's still in print if it went out of print. But I don't remember it going out of print either. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love all the comments. I did not mean to cut that off right then, I promise. Uh, Sibner, <laughs> no, it is not a 50 gigabyte disc instead of a 25 gig. It's the exact same thing. Uh, Tony says, I got the 2018 release, no slipcover. Okay, so they added a 14 cent piece of cardboard and now they're calling it a reissue. Yeah, I don't want to believe that they would be cynical enough just to try to get people that had already purchased it to buy it again because of the slipcover. I don't want to believe that. Uh, maybe they're just were gonna they they just ran out of their pressing, so they were gonna press more, and they're like, oh, we'll just do a new edition with the slipcover because people like that. I don't know. Anyway, it's great if you don't have it, you should pick it up. It's fantastic. Yeah, movie. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, they're don't also buy it doing the slipcover that. though. <laughs> <laughs> They're also doing that on February 6th for OSS 117. Uh, this is exactly the same transfer and encoding as the 2017 release. 
they uh, they are doing a handful of these in in a row that are exactly the same. So, yeah, this one is especially weird because I'm pretty sure this one did have a slip cover on its initial release. So why they why don't they just keep it in print? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Waves says I would hope that people wouldn't be tempted to buy an eighteen dollars slip cover. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kino usually does great things. I, I'm, I'm not trying to be cynical about them just yet. Uh, next up, Footloose, the next Paramount title that we're going to talk about tonight. Coming on 4K on February 13th in a standard release that looks like this and a Steelbook release that looks like this, which uh, very much seems inspired by the Guardians of the Galaxy Steelbook since there's lots of references to Footloose in that film. Uh, this looks like a fun Steelbook. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen this in ages. I'm sure it's fun. It'll probably look great. So maybe I'll watch it. I don't know. It's hard to find the time. It, that's true. And I mean, Paramount, I'd again, you say they'll probably look great. Half the releases on 4k are, are really great. And the other half are frustrating for one reason or another. Yeah. Hopefully this is a good one. Uh, again, no new features on this. And you, I can't imagine if they asked Kevin Bacon to film something for this that he would have said no. No, they just don't want to put any money into into new features. That's, you know, they can just recycle the same ones that they have since DVD, which <laughs> seems to be the pattern. I, yeah. I mean, that's fine. It's... I'm glad the stuff's getting released. If they don't want to put the money into that, there's plenty of labels that will do that for certain films. You know, it is disappointing when a movie that you really like is getting a new 4K or something and you're not, you don't get anything new. But, you know, like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles had all the deleted yeah. scenes and that had never been available. So, you know, sometimes they do the right thing. Maybe in uh, eight years, they'll license it to Shout Studios and we'll get a critic commentary. And that's it. And it'll be a $55 <laughs> site exclusive. <laughs> uh, next up, speaking of $55, <laughs> uh, Seven is coming on 4K in this Ultimate Collector's Edition sometime in 2024. The date that's out there is a placeholder date. Uh, it's showing is December of 2024. But not only is it coming as this Ultimate Collector's Edition, there's also this What's in the Box Edition which is just wacky uh for <laughs> for the record the big edition includes the film on 4k and blu-ray in a unique box packaging which happens to look like a uh, box that is about the size of a head uh it's housed in a steel book that we don't know the design of yet there's a 38 page booklet there is a little trees brand air freshener seven deadly sin comic books a double-sided poster uh, seven Deadly Sin crime scene art cards, which just seems very sadistic. A Help Me Glow in the Dark art card. An Investigation Chalkboard art card. And a numbered sticker of authenticity. Because when I have 37 art cards from seven, I have to make sure that they are authentic. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit overkill. Uh, uh, but, you know, the movie has a lot of fans, so... Maybe they'll sell some of these. I don't know. I, I'm not really that impressed with the the extras and the packaging. I'm really more impressed with getting a good presentation of the film. But, hey, everybody's different. Uh, so yeah. I'm glad it's coming out in 4K finally. It's taken a while. Hopefully this is uh, the, the starting point for all of the Fitcher 4Ks because he's got some that would look incredible in 4K. Definitely. Uh, again, I don't think any of these are new. There's four commentaries on this. There's the alternate endings, exploration of the opening title sequence, uh, different angles, the notebooks, full motion video details, all that fun stuff. I believe all of that is from the older release. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if anything else is uh, not new. Uh, John DeMarsco says, Fincher on 4K is a big deal, right? Do we have any? We do. The Social Network is in the Sony uh, Columbia Classics collection, that first one. But I think this is only the second one. I think. I think yeah. you're right. Nothing else would have came out 4K because Mank never got a physical release. No, that, that would have to be it, I think. All right. 
Next up, uh, let's talk about this. So, uh, more possible bad news for Australia physical media collectors. Um, I had somebody uh, let me know that uh, Sony Pictures might be pulling out of Australia in 2024, and there are no pre-orders showing after December 31st. Um, what I'm hearing now is potentially that could be because they're changing distributors because they're downsizing at the very least. And if they're already downsizing, that could be a bad bad sign going into the end of 2024 or going into 2025. Uh, but the the scarier part of this is that there are certain of uh, certain locations of JB Hi-Fi that will reportedly stop stocking movies and TV shows altogether in 2024. And they had a pretty decent stranglehold on the market from what I hear because most of the other big box stores are not selling them. And so JB was the only place to get them. Uh, I really hope all this doesn't come to fruition, but it's it's kind of inevitable, inevitable because from what I hear, Australia they're just not buying them. And even when you when you hear that, you think, well, what about Imprint and Umbrella? They're doing very well. A lot of their stuff is being sold to non-Australians. Yeah, I think that's where the Region Zero uh, aspect comes in. They're selling a lot overseas. That's it's just unfortunate. I don't know a lot about the Australian market. Uh, and you know, I, I always feel bad cause you know, there's definitely, there's definitely fans, a lot of collectors, a lot of fans of physical media there. Uh, I know because we've had several Australians visit Scarecrow and, you know, I'm just so excited and delighted to be there. Uh, and, uh, but I don't know, uh, you know, if, the market can't really sustain it. And especially, you know, with Disney, you know, stopping the corporations will, you know, they're looking at that stuff and they're taking cues from one another. So once somebody does something, they all start looking at each other thinking, Oh, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe we need to do this as well. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see how it shakes out. The hard part is when, when Disney pulls out like that places like, Paramount and Sony and all the other major studios that are still down there will only look at it as data. Well, now Disney's gone. Look, they're selling less and less discs down there. Well, yeah, there's less yeah. for sale. Of course you're going to be selling less. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know as far as, you know, like uh, how many people buy retail, you know, in person, how many buy online, but less options is just, is never going to be good. Right. It's just going to be less options. And so someone that might have bought a disc because it was convenient to what they were doing, uh, you know, w when presented with that opportunity might not otherwise. And that just chips away at the numbers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not to completely go back to the conversation we had two months ago, but th that's kind of what really keeps grinding my gears about this whole Best Buy situation. There's still mm -hmm. countless people I'm seeing uh, you know, Walmart announcing an exclusive steelbook. I, I think we talked about some last week and other people saying, oh, it's so great. I don't have to deal with Best Buy anymore. And now Walmart and Amazon are picking up the, the slack. That doesn't help us. I mean, if less people are selling them, less competition means they have less motivation to do better. It, it doesn't do anything yeah. good for any of us. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these companies, it, it varies. I know Best Buy was the same, Walmart's the same. In some areas, they have a really robust selection. In some areas, they don't. Uh, so just because your specific location decides that it's not worth doing it doesn't mean that other ones aren't uh, a, a really good avenue for people to pick up that kind of stuff. Right. And so you just got to think about the whole picture. Uh, and, and, you know the labels just need to be getting out there, you know, just having stuff on shelves that people can kind of see. And the less discs that people see, the faster it becomes irrelevant to them in their mind. I mean, people already really do feel that way. The majority of people out there until they realize that they want to see something and it's not available on streaming. And then they yeah. come around to trying to track it down and seeing how hard it is. But if it's out of sight, then it's going to be out of mind. 
I I don't know what it is, but I also am feeling rather hopeful. I feel like the the second half of this year, we've seen some interesting tide swings, and, and I really hope that it bodes well for the at least the next few years because there could be some really positive responses to some of these things, like Oppenheimer selling very well. These uh, Paramount Steelbooks that we're going to talk about in um or maybe I didn't post them, but uh they're 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 re-releasing three Paramount Steelbooks that sold out on the first run, and they said let's just sell some more. Uh, and they weren't planning on doing that. So if, if stuff like that's going to happen, that that could bode well for the future. Yeah, I I mean, I've been kind of in this a long time and kind of tracking with, and I really feel like in the last few years and this year especially, there has been a lot more interest. It's it's like, it's not just us in a bubble here thinking, oh, we like this thing. And so like other people care and it, and it's it's still relevant. It actually is becoming more relevant to more people. I can tell you from my experience of just seeing a lot of different people sort of being introduced to physical media and becoming excited about it. Uh, So that's, that's a great thing. And and I feel like a lot of the boutique labels have done a really good job in kind of fostering that because they're putting out exciting, interesting, diverse things that normally wouldn't have been gotten out there. Right. And the studios can just follow that lead and put out the stuff that they have because they're sitting on, you know, almost uh, infinite amounts of things that should get out there that they can make money on. They just don't want to make the money. It's it's kind of crazy to me. Literally all of the content. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Disney's the worst at that. They have the most and they're just so reticent. But that, that's been their history. They've always been yeah. resident, re, reticent to put that out there. The, the They've always ball. wanted the, con, the control. And that's, and that's the issue with this more than anything. There's Maybe they're making less money, but they have more control. But more control by corporations is not good for anyone. Not, not for consumers, at least. Yeah. Uh, you know what is good for consumers? Uh, let's talk about one of the most exciting new labels of 2023, and that's Radiance Films. Uh, gosh, I just happen to have uh, gotten my brand new subscription shipment from them. Uh, Open this up today, that End of Civilization box set that they put out. Um, they're kind of killing it. Uh, first one that they're putting out is the Bounty Hunter trilogy. This is, uh, really exciting for a lot of people that were into these. Um, these are going to have, uh, let's see, HD digital transfers of every film presented on two discs made available on Blu-ray for the first time in the entire world. Uh, that's not on bootlegs at least. Uh, commentary on <laughs> Killer's Mission by Tom Mess, interview with film historian and uh, Shigehiro Ozawa expert Akihito Ito about the filmmaker, visual essay on Aichi Kudo by Japanese cinema expert Robin Gatto, uh, series poster, a press image gallery, some trailers, some subs, six postcards of artwork from the films, and then, of course, they always got a nice booklet in here with new writing by samurai film expert Elaine Silver, an obituary and uh, interview piece, and uh, just so much going into these this looks like a wonderful release and you can get it for like 40 bucks this is going to be great yeah i'm excited about this i haven't actually seen any of these and these sounds just so great and with radiance putting out they're going to look fantastic they're going to have great bonus features contextualize everything so i'm definitely in for this one have you uh paid much attention to radiance this year got anything from oh radiance is fantastic their their slate has been so diverse and interesting but everyone they put so much love into and it's and it's really apparent that they are very carefully curating their selections so yeah i love radiance I, it's amazing to think that this has been their first year because it seems like they've been putting out such fantastic releases while doing everything for the shelf shock rewind awards this year i've had I've had more questions clarifying about Radiance than anything else, I think, because their <laughs> first release was on January 2nd of this year, and nobody can believe that. Everybody's like, no, they, they've had to have been around for a couple of years yeah. at this point. No, nope, Yeah, I was thinking yet. back about it, because that was Big Time Gambling Boss, right? That was their yes, first. Yes, sir. And if anyone hasn't gotten that, that movie is amazing. You know, even if you're not a huge Yakuza movie fan, it's... It's got a different feel than a lot of them. It's it's excellent. I would definitely recommend it. 
Nice, 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 nice. Uh, yeah, only one year, and uh, I can tell you from the CSC nominations that are already coming in for the Shelf Shock Awards, they're they're going to be mentioned for sure. Uh, they've they've oh, put yeah. out some more stuff coming out though. Uh, oh, I totally forgot the release date on that one. Uh, that's March 25th in the UK, and it's also coming out on March 26th in the US and Canada. So that's an exciting thing that it's everywhere. Uh, this next one is March 25th in the UK only on Blu-ray. This is Tony Arzenta, which is also called No Way Out with Elaine Delon. Uh, this one is going to have an archival interview with Elaine Delon from 73. New interview with Euro Crime Authority Mike Malloy on the film's place within the Polizio Teshi canon. Uh, select scene commentary with the critic Peter Jimstad on the incredible supporting cast of the film. And then, of course, we got a booklet. Um, I've not seen this one either. This has been oh, a big one. This is a great. This is a great one. It's Amazing that they're resurrecting this because uh, it's, it hasn't really had that good releases, and uh, it's a fantastic movie. So definitely, if you're into the Italian crime, uh, it's worth watching. Absolutely. Wait a minute, Def Crocodile. You're saying Solomon King released in 2023? That doesn't feel right at all. I'm going to have to look this up. I'm not going to believe that one. <laughs> Good God, that came out in January of 2023. What the hell? Wow. Oh, it's been a long year. Like so long ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, next title from Radiance. That, that uh, one's just UK only, correct? UK only, yes, sir. It's interesting because this has never come out in the States and, and, and on any edition. So I wonder if there is actually some issue with the rights going on. Very interesting. But this is region free, I believe, if I if I remember correctly from the from the site. So that shouldn't sway anyone from not ordering this edition. I would recommend this one definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, I've heard literally nothing but great things about this, and it is listed as region free on the Radiant site. So if you're into it, take a look at it, please. It is uh, interesting with with the Radiance the titles that they. Uh, don't license for the United States that necessarily they might have licensed. Some obviously are licensed by other people, but something like this, like Man on the Roof, which is also region free. Who knows if somebody's going to put them out here, but I, I just wonder what goes into that decision. Uh, Wave in the comments is saying that in the Twitter replies, Radiant said that the U.S. rights just plain weren't available. Yeah, I wonder who does hold the rights to that. That's Since it has never come out, there's never been an edition on any format, as far as I know. Jeez. All right. Uh, next one is March 25th. Again, UK only. Uh, this is Sujo River from 2000. And uh, this one says, Mardar is a small-time crook who delivers packages without asking questions until he is tasked with delivering Mai Mai, the daughter of Shady Smuggler, looking exactly like his long-lost love, Mudan, who threw herself into the Sujo River. Mardar becomes convinced she is his dead lover. Set within the murky wastelands of Shanghai, Ye Lao's award-winning retooling of Hitchcock's Vertigo is a visual treat that features the kinetic style of Wong Kar Wai's Chungking Express. A unique take on the neo-noir genre, Sujo River is newly restored in 4K, made available on Blu-ray for the first time in the UK. Uh, there's a newly filmed interview with critic and programmer Tony Raines on this, a short film documentary portrait by Lou of his home city from 2001. Uh, there's the original trailer and then a booklet, of course, with new writing by Josh Slater-Williams and a newly translated archival interview with Ye Lau. Um, yeah, this one sounded really great, too. Yeah, this one I've, I've seen. I haven't seen the movie, but I've looked at multiple times and wanted to watch, uh, but I haven't checked it out yet. Um, Strand put it out in the States earlier this year yeah. in a bare bones edition. Uh, so if, you, if you're if you interested in this, this is probably the edition that you're going to want to go with. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Radiance is, if two companies are putting it out, it's going to be rare that Radiance is going to be topped. Next one is March 25th in the UK only, a story written with water from 1965. This is by Kiju Yoshida, who also did, uh, gosh, what was the other one? Um, Arrows, I believe, is the other one that uh, Arrow Academy put out previously. 
that uh, Yoshida also did. Um, they might have done a trilogy even. I just remember. Oh, that, yeah, the set, the box set. Oh, here it is, Arrows and Massacre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this one is going to have an archival interview with the director Yosh- uh, Kiju Yoshida from 2008. New interview with the star Mariko Okada, which. I mean, that's amazing alone that we have 58 years after the film came out that they're going to be able to do an interview for it. That's great. Uh, interview with scholar Jennifer Coates and then uh, newly translated English subs and then a booklet with new writing by Alexander Jacoby. Have you seen this one? I haven't even heard of this one until they announced it. So, But it sounds really intriguing. And, uh, you know, I like that they're doing a lot of Japanese cinema, but it's really varied the stuff they're putting out yes yes you know there's something for any kind of taste i think in there yeah they, they're they've kind of killed it on that front and it seems like they've got a lot more coming from that side too yeah all right i think yeah that is it for radiance and uh now a couple of disconnected things uh the first thing um i showed the zine earlier if you want a chance to be in this, a couple things. Um, we're doing a letter to the editor section. Uh, I've already got at least one letter. Uh, if you want anything in here, if you want to complain about your shipment not coming in, if you want to complain about the zine, you want to complain about me, if you want to give praise to somebody else, you want to yeah. highlight a release that nobody ever talks about, write a letter. And uh, me and uh, the editor, we will respond to it. And, uh, and you'll be in print and it'll be fun. You can do it anonymous if you want. You can have a name attached if you want. Just send me an email. Uh, I've got that uh, linked here in the post, or you can find it in the description here on YouTube. Um, but on top of that, if you want to write an actual article for the zine, uh, I've not had to really ask anybody to write for this thing yet. So if you want to be um, printed in here, listed as an author on Amazon and everything, you can write for the zine. Uh, let's let's talk about it. Send me an email. We'll talk about it. some ideas. We'll try to get some stuff in the future. And uh yeah, I, I, that's how everything that's been in the zine so far has has come to be. I've just talked to people and they said, hey, I'd, I'd write for it. And they'd send it in and it's freaking great. So if you're into it, uh, let me know. Send me an email. Uh, I'm also thinking about doing a buy, sell, trade section at the end of the zine. If anybody's into that, let me know. Because uh, if people would use it, I, I might put it in there like a classified section. Um, next thing I put up an interview this week with somebody and not a bunch of people are watching this yet. And, uh, I, I, I just wanted to point out all of the stuff I put out that's with filmmakers gets hardly any views. People watch if it's about physical media, but man, I, I like some of my other stuff about filmmakers and people should give it a watch. Uh, I talked to Todd Strauss Schulson and he is the director of the final girls from 2015. And his first movie was a very Harold and Kumar Christmas. And, uh, this guy. <laughs> is amazing uh some of the stuff that he talks about is a ridiculously ridiculously interesting path that he took um hearing him just uh get gleeful about the first time he saw his films in a video store uh his his love for extras on discs is palpable it's it's a whole lot of fun so uh i think people should give it a watch yeah i haven't watched Mm. this yet but uh just because i've been super busy this week but uh Ryan's interviews are always really good. He asks great questions and he follows up and continues on the threads, which, you know, a lot of people don't do if they specifically have something that they're wanting to shape the interview as, but Ryan will definitely allow it to organically grow. And I really appreciate that because that's where you get to the really uh, special sort of uh, information during his interviews. I appreciate that. And uh, the the secret behind that is I don't prepare at all. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Going to more announcements. Um, Kino, uh, just adding to the collection of what we talked about tonight. The Thomas Crown Affair from 1968. Re-release. All the same features, same transfer, same encoding. Uh, The first release probably didn't have a slipcover because this is also 2018. But, uh, yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's unfortunate they decided to bunch all these together this week because it's not that exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's good that stuff's staying out there, but it's kind of weird to announce them as releases when they're essentially the same thing. Yeah, and I, I can understand peppering out the reissues throughout the year. Mm -hmm. But if they're going to do like 40 of these over the next few months and one week a month is going to be like four or five reissues, 
that doesn't feel great either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it just seemed like, and this was the first week where this happened, where they just had a bunch of exactly the same reissues, not on a on a bigger disc, not with added commentaries, just these right. straight up exactly the same thing. And then to have so many in the same week is a little bit strange. Yeah. So if you if you want the reissue, February sixth on Blu-ray from Kino. Uh, but also, uh, they're doing it for burnt offerings. Uh, and this one's even a little more egregious because it's all the way back from 2015. Um, no new features, no new encoding, no new transfer. Uh, same Blu-ray, brand new slipcover if you're into it. Great movie. I uh, highly recommend if you've never seen Burnt Offerings from 76. Oh, definitely. This is this is a brilliant, brilliant movie. But uh, yeah, th- this is, it's just odd. A lot of these, I honestly don't remember going on a print, so it just confuses me more. Because I, 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 you know, I, I try to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Or you watch the sales where stuffs in, uh, you know, while supplies last, and so you kind of get an idea of what's not going to be available. But a bunch of these ones, I feel like, did they go out of print? Really? I, I think one or two of these may have, and I, I agree with Craig here. I think all they did was re-up the licensing on them, which means they'll have them for another five years. But to announce them as a new release is a very odd move. Very odd move. Uh, next up, uh, even though Kino has been weird, this might be the weirdest thing of this entire week. Uh, Shout Fact, or I keep saying Shout Factory, Shout Studios announced two brand new website exclusives. The first one, Deadly Outlaw Recca from 2002. And uh, <laughs> I can't believe I have to say this sentence. This item is limited to 1,620 units. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no contract is going to limit them to 1,620 units. What is happening here? Yeah, does anyone have any context for why that would be? I saw that too today. I was like, what? Is this typo? This this is the <laughs> most random number. Because they keep changing the runs. Right. But it's always an even sort of like, you know, 1,000 or 1,200 or something. And this one just... I, I it the the choices for the for the exclusives are confusing enough, but then the the runs make it just baffling. Yeah, shout has gone from one thousand to twelve hundred to fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred, and now they went. You know what? The sweet spot sixteen hundred and twenty <laughs> releases. <laughs> I yeah I I don't know about them anymore. They confuse me in their choices. I mean, obviously they have they're privy to information that other people don't have. So you know, whatever, <laughs> I don't know. I like to think that I like to think that they have a reason behind this because it's too strange. Maybe they're just trolling everyone. It could be. <laughs> Nick Avidi says 1,620 units or 1,800 Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the, the, the transfer rate. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, the, the most infuriating thing about this, this would sell very well if this was a wide release. There's no doubt about that. This should not be a side exclusive. Beyond that, it's $30. There's no extra features on it, not even a trailer listed. No information about a new restoration or transfer, nothing. And they want you to spend $30 plus shipping if you're just buying this one release. That That's a lot. Yeah, I think they're trying to see, to try to push with some of these exclusives, just how little they can do and get people to pay for them, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah. I think that people aren't really biting that much anymore because now that they have the actual accounts uh, of re, you know remaining stock on the actual site, you can kind of see some of the exclusive hasn't, haven't really sold that well. So I'm curious to see how well these ones do. I mean, this is a Mieke film, so it seems like they wouldn't have any trouble selling them if they actually did a, a decent edition and a wide release. But I, yeah. like I said, I don't know how they make their decisions. <laughs> I don't think the, the landing at Plymouth rock is the reason for the 1620 Ronnie, but that's a great theory. <laughs> uh, I love this. Uh, let's see. Uh, they are also doing samurai resurrection from 2003. Again, Limited to 1620 again, no features listed, uh, again, $30. Uh, 
really odd choices. I also got to point out, Shout is one of the only boutique labels out there that their website is where you will find the lowest possible resolution for their releases. The, the pictures for them look the worst compared to everywhere else. You would imagine even their Facebook or Twitter or something would have these compressed, terrible images. They're way better than what they put on their website. And I do not comprehend that at all. Yeah, their site has a lot of issues uh, that are baffling. And so it doesn't really surprise me that that would also be added to it. But, you know, I don't want to bash and shout too much. I appreciate what they do, but yeah, it's they make it hard not to. <laughs> uh, agreed there. Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, some Francis Ford Coppola bashing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> March 4th on 4K in the UK, Studio Canal is releasing One from the Heart reprise from 1982. And uh, this is going to be another Francis Ford Coppola came and made a different version of a film himself type of release. Uh, this is six minutes of footage being added to replace the original negative is how they're wording that. Uh, it was previously thought to be destroyed and is now resulting in a brand new reprise version, hence that word at the end of the title there. Um, there's a lot going into this, at least. Uh, there is a bunch of new featurettes looking at the cast, reinventing the musical with Boz Lerman, uh, the choreography from this, uh, restoration comparison. But again, it is Francis Ford Coppola coming in and making some changes. And uh, you and I talked about this a little bit when we discussed uh, the first time about people coming in and, and changing things. How do you feel about something like this? Well, you know, it's their movie. They can do that. Uh, I feel like as long as they make the original available as well and don't try to suppress it, that I'm, I'm fine with that. Maybe, maybe it's going to be better or maybe it's just interesting and it looks like unlike the past uh you know redone versions this one actually does have both uh it does most yeah. of the other ones have not had the the original editions involved so i think that's great hopefully uh you know if he decides to go forth and do all the rest of his movies which seems like he w wants to do i don't know why but uh, as long as they're including the original, I, like I haven't seen this movie, so I don't really know. I can't judge the quality of the original compared to the new version, but I'm happy to have both out there and for the audience to decide which one is more relevant to them. Yeah, this is the best possible opportunity for something like this to get screwed with and for people to see this. Uh, like dude here says we probably won't get the unscrewed version with it. We will. You can see it's on the second 4K disc. Uh, you will be able to have both releases in the best possible quality, which is great. I'm glad they're doing that. Um, I really wish, uh, you know, Wong Kar Wai screwing with this color timing, release both versions. Uh, if you're going to have Bong Joon-ho come in and, and make Memories of Murder, th this yellow tinted film suddenly, sure, give us both versions. That'd be nice. Yeah, exactly. I just don't I don't understand why that's so problematic for some people just to have both, but right. You know, it's like I said, it's their film. We, you know, we don't really have much control over it. Exactly. Um, it's just, it's just bad when, you know, you can have the really nice high def version in something that is maybe an inferior film to what, you know, would originally have been out there. Exactly. All right. Hopefully, think... hopefully this means he will be doing the conversation soon because that one really needs a 4k and the Blu-ray is out of print now. So hopefully that does mean that that's the next one on deck. I don't know for sure. That would make sense quite obviously. I mean, especially with it going out of print and this one, uh, yeah, Chris Silvestri was just checking. This has never been released on blue or 4K in the U.S. except for in a collection. So this yeah, is... it came in a box set. I remember. Uh, but yeah, that was the only way that it was available ever in the U.S. So this is a big deal, and uh, places like Diabolic will probably get this. Orbit will probably get this. Grindhouse Video will probably get this. Atomic uh, Movie Store will probably get this. Um, Scarecrow will probably be able to rent it from them eventually. 
this is great. Uh, next up, this is a big deal. So we talked about uh, one important giallo earlier, uh, but Le Chat Quifume, uh, the smoking cat from France, they've announced that they are releasing the house with laughing windows on 4K in June in France. And uh, that release will probably not be English friendly. Uh, fortunately, they also let slip in their comments that it is confirmed that a UK and US release will be coming for this movie soon. And this is one of the most clamored for titles for years. This is a big, big, big deal. Yeah, this is one of the probably the best of the missing in action, Jolly. One of the one of the biggest titles and one of the actual just best, most interesting uh, films. You know, because it, it often gets uh cited in, in the top uh you know along with argento and yep. uh, some of the fulci ones um and you know it hasn't been out in the states since i think since image put it out forever ago and you know that was a pretty early dvd so it's been a really long time it definitely needs to upgrade yeah th this is this is a big big deal i think at this point um Gosh, there's probably three or four other like, semi-big uh, Giallo that we're waiting on releases for. Black Billy of the Tarantula is probably the biggest one that comes to mind. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting close to the end of that big list, though. Yeah, there's still plenty out there. Uh, not of great ones, particularly. But, but you know, The Deep Cuts list is forever long, yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, it, it's good to fill some of these gaps, especially for this one, because this is a legitimately great, absolutely great film, and it doesn't have any good versions out there that really do it justice. So I'm glad that it's finally happening. It, it's just one of those that's always been like, why, why hasn't that come out? What's going on with it? So I'm glad it's resolved. Yeah, there's there's so many of these that I I'm ecstatic that we can now like program a full uhd giallo marathon of masterpieces and spend an entire weekend doing it um th th this is just intense I i'm very excited for this uh two more left uh the first is the moon from 2023 is coming on february 27th from wellgo usa I had not heard about this, but this sounds pretty fantastic. This says, seven years after Korea's first fully manned mission to the moon ends in disaster, a second human space flight is launched successfully until a strong solar wind causes the spacecraft to malfunction. With an astronaut left stranded in space and quickly running out of oxygen, the Naro Space Center turns to its former managing director to avert yet another fatal catastrophe. I love movies like this, and that sounds so compelling. Yeah, I hadn't heard about it until uh, the, re the release announcement. So it does sound really cool, though. So definitely going to check it out. Wellgo has been doing very well with some of these releases. So, yeah, this is one I'm definitely going to need to look into. Uh, last up is a fundraiser that is out there for a title called An Aleutian Adventure. This is a restoration for a silent documentary that was lost from the 1920s. Uh, it is about a trip to the P.E. Harris Cannery at False Pass in Alaska. This feature film has some amazing shots of Alaska in the late 20s, including the beautiful scenery of the Aleutian Islands. And uh, after the original release, this was forgotten and became lost and undocumented until they discovered the original 35 millimeter nitrate master positives. That's pretty damn cool. Uh, they're gonna be preserving that, scanning it to 2K transfers and full restoration and everything. The runtime on this is 56 minutes, and if you are interested in donating, the Kickstarter link is there. Uh, on top of that, they're going to be including two animated shorts, including Felix the Cat, which is called Felix All at Sea, which is restored from an original 35mm nitrate print from 1922. That will also have a brand new musical score created. And then Looney Tunes Daffy Southern Exposure restored from the original WB 16 millimeter print that will have uh, the theatrical soundtrack fully restored and the original WB shield and titles included. I mean, it sounds like a fun release. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm this glad is very that old. this is getting out there, you know, because if they discovered the materials, you know, you got to get it out there for people to see, to appreciate it. Otherwise it's just going to rot. So 
it's nice that they're able to uh, run the Kickstarter and hopefully get enough support to do that. <laughs> Silent Mandible says, this isn't even on Letterboxd. Yeah, that's that's how lost this is. Uh, and I just posted the link in the chat if you want to open that in another tab and uh, kick into that afterwards. Uh, and that's it for this week. Uh, now we'll remind you about what is coming out next week in case you forgot. Find out what everybody's excited for. It's kind of a kind of a big week again. JFK 4K, that's the big one next week. And man, pictures of that release showing up for people are coming in finally. That JFK release is a hard box release with three Blu-ray cases on the inside. The wow, thing is we haven't got ours. We haven't got ours in yet. There's been a lot of delays with certain releases, so uh, but I'm excited for this one. It's got that original theatrical cut in there. Uh, I mean. It's not on 4K, but that's fine. It's on HD at least, but I love the JFK. It's just maybe the best Oliver Stone film. It's just such an impeccably cast and like well-made film, so I'm excited to see it again on this. And I haven't seen the theatrical cut since it was in the theater. So Wow. Uh, Dead Zone 4K is next week. The Warriors 4K is coming from Arrow, and of course... That's maybe the biggest deal because it is the theatrical cut as well, which has been lost in time for quite a while. Uh, the James Cameron Avatar re-releases uh, for Avatar, the original and Avatar The Way of Water, those are both coming with new features and all of that fun stuff. Uh, the Columbo set with all of the special features not included like we had originally wanted, that releases <laughs> next week. Uh, old boy 4k from neon men behind the sun gets a retail release from massacre video shaw brothers classics volume four from shout is coming underworld 4k is part of that kino cult line that's coming from kino danza macabre volume two from severin the savage guns uh westerns collection that i cannot wait to get uh that one actually it should be here for me soon uh <laughs> very soon at this point um the exorcist believer everybody's gonna be jumping at that one monk the second season that's coming from kino sinner from kino as well elegant beast coming from radiance uh pet cemetery bloodlines 4k high spirits from sandpiper invaders from mars from sandpiper uh life is cheap but toilet paper is expensive is not releasing next week i uh, wanted to remind everybody there's a slight delay i think that one's going to be a week or two later coming from arbalos uh 35 shots of rum coming from cinema guild that's that claire denis film the rachel papers that's the next uh, mgm studios title like we were talking about earlier mondo new york uh highly recommend picking that one up i cannot wait to watch that one uh the ghost station from Wellgo. i definitely wanted to check this one out uh, and the Less Vampires from Kino Classics from 1915. Uh, the Wandering Earth 2 from Wellgo is supposed to be really good as well. And uh, Satanic Hispanics from Epic Pictures, that one's supposed to be a good one as well. And that's uh, pretty much it for me, I guess, unless you're super into August Underground's Penance, which is coming out from Unearthed. Uh, other than those first couple that we talked about, what are the big ones for you next week there, Joel? Oh... More Shaw Brothers always is good. I mean, we were ragging on on Shout, but uh, they've been cranking those out, and they're good releases, you know. Uh, and it's nice after not having Shaw Brothers stuff represented. Now we have an overabundance of Shaw Brothers represented. Yeah, but Shaw Brothers has so many releases throughout their history, so you know this is like one percent of the total, anyway. And uh, from what I hear from everybody that I trust, this Shaw Brothers Volume 4 is the best of the four releases so far. So definitely need to check that one. Uh, all right. I got to pick that up then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just we were expensive. Just... There's so many editions. I already have the Shaw Scopes and yeah. That's the thing. If you're a Shaw Brothers fan, you've been eating good these last couple of years. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of these from the Hong Kong editions, the celestial releases that Scarecrow has, because we just bought them all like, or not all of them. There was a lot of them, but we, you know, we've had them all, but that they're, mostly they're non anamorphic. So, mm. you know, these are the way to see them in a proper edition and they have commentaries and extras. It's, it's kind of amazing that these films are getting so much love. Yeah. I don't know what happened with Shaw. I mean, they are not Shaw shout. 
they have released uh i think we're going on six shaw sets this year counting the side exclusives and the yeah tai lung collection or david lung collection um that's that's crazy it went from zero zero shaw titles to like 56 in one year yeah that's that's it, that's crazy and that's just from one company there's been shaw stuff from <laughs> elsewhere as well so it's it's nice it's really good i'm i'm glad all this hong kong stuff the floodgates have started to open because those are those have been never available mostly in in decent condition um or at all so now we're you know fans of that stuff because not even just the shaw stuff and the kung fu stuff but all that Stuff like 88 Films putting out a lot of the yes. not early 90s action stuff. That stuff is amazing as well. And, you know, I think that a lot of people, they've maybe seen uh, John, it's like some of the John Woo stuff, but there's so much good stuff out there. Yes, yes, there is. Um, and and uh, I, I say uh, fans of Shaw are eating good. The problem is if you're buying it all, it might be hard to eat because uh, th there's so many titles right now. <laughs> yeah exactly with that kind of stuff you know i like to pick those up and i like to support those kind of releases but you know those box sets are 130 140 dollars each well, and to release them every 60 days that's kind of like sadistic <laughs> that's for people that really yeah. want them that's that's a lot it's it seems like another strange decision because it seems like you got to walk that line between like keeping the audience for that excited uh, and not kind of like overwhelming them. And I feel like they've tipped over a little bit into the overwhelming the people, especially with this site exclusive thrown in there because those are won't even be on sale. Probably not for too much. So I don't know. I mean, I'm happy they're doing it, but it's another confusing decision. Well, Shell. and, the worst part with the side exclusives is if you are an international fan, you probably can't even get a hold of them because they don't ship. Exactly. Sometimes they ship to Canada, but even then, most of the time they don't. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to go either with a reshipper or, you know, eBay or something. Unfortunately, sometimes they have them on Diabolic. I don't know about the other sites, but you know, if yeah. you keep an eye out there, you might be able to snag a copy. Thank you for watching The Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share with someone else that may appreciate this.